Almost a decade ago, NVIDIA launched the GTX 2 Gigabyte to fairly mixed reviews. You see, the 960 was a 128-bit mid-range GPU that while generally faster than its predecessor, the 760, it occasionally actually lost. And while it didn't raise pricing on its tier, this disappointing performance and tiny VRAM capacity made many PC gamers feel very unimpressed by NVIDIA's offering. Sound familiar? That's right, the 4060 Ti that just launched reminds me of that dunce of a card from 2015, the 960. That actually, just like the 4060 Ti, had to have double VRAM capacity models rushed out of the door two months after launch, but for way too much money to really justify them. Again, just like the 4060 Ti. And actually, if you want to hear something depressing, if you go back and look at 960 reviews, you'll notice something. So... Right now, the 4060 Ti is being marketed as a 1080p targeted card for $400. Back in 2015, NVIDIA was marketing the $330 970 as a 1440p and even debatably light 4K gaming card. Oh, how the times and greed have changed. Now, look, I brought up the 960 not just for funsies, but to highlight that NVIDIA has tried this before, and then they were spanked. And because they were spanked by this community of PC gamers, they then brought out a much more aggressively priced and uh, impressive GTX 1060 that doubled performance over the 960. Because of just how bad the 960 sold relative to previous generations, NVIDIA knew they had to make up for it. And to be fair, right now, most reviewers are spanking NVIDIA because the 4060 Ti basically does nothing to improve pricing or performance at its given tier. And because it's now 2023, not 2020, when 8 gigabyte Ampere cards came out, those 8 gigabyte buffers are a bigger issue and not just an issue in 1440p. I really recommend you check out the hardware unbox review of the 4060 Ti to see how even in 1080p, not just in the recent games, but sometimes in games from years ago like Halo Infinite, there are textures being actively compressed in front of your eyes, giving you not a mid-range, but a low-end gaming experience. But I have to say this. It's good that reviewers are pointing things like this out, but it can't just be reviewers. We PC gamers really do need to teach NVIDIA a lesson here. You know, the 4070 Ti, the 4080, and the 4070 didn't sell as well as NVIDIA wanted. I don't think it's enough. When you look at the 4060 Ti, this is like the worst launch of Lovelace yet, and it needs to have the worst sales in the Lovelace series so that NVIDIA finally gets it through their head that it doesn't even matter if they control most of the market. If they don't improve performance at a given tier in a new generation, we just are not going to buy it, and they need to get their act together. And you know what? Honestly... I think that's going to happen. When I reached out to a lot of my contacts at retailers and distributors, from what they are seeing in pre-launch data, it is insane. I want to put some quotes on screen here. So I have one major U.S. retailer contact that told me that while they will have a decent supply of 4060 Ti's for launch, they have no plan to resupply them. And that on average, the pricing across about a dozen SKUs they will have on launch day is coming to around $440. So that's, you know, averaging the number they have of a given SKU amongst all the SKUs and pricing. The average price of a 4060 Ti seems to be $440 with 30 to 50% of the stock being at MSRP, but maybe over half of it being above MSRP. And yeah, this person thinks it's absolutely hilarious that NVIDIA is trying to get away with this. It seems like AIBs are kind of hoping people are willing to pay above 3060 Ti pricing for the 4060 Ti. But you know, this person doesn't think it's going to happen. And when I talk to people at other retailers, like Micro Center here with source number two, they don't think this thing's going to sell almost at all. You see, Micro Center at the corporate level puts out feelers across their locations, apparently to check if there are a notable amount of customers inquiring about when a given product will be available. And so far, there has been zero interest reported across basically all Micro Center locations. Like no customers coming in the door and saying, hey, when will you have the 4060 Ti available? No one's asking for it. And because of this, 
Micro Center isn't even going to open early for the 4060 Ti launch, and some locations are ordering only like a handful of cards to stock with no plans to resupply because they just do not think this thing will sell. They're not going to open early. They're not going to stock a lot of them, and that is unprecedented for a 60 Ti card. Usually, this is a high-volume seller that retailers are clamoring to get as much supply as they can. Not the case here. In fact, when I look at launch volume for the 4060 Ti with one of my best sources, which I won't say more than that, I am told that the 4060 Ti will have similar volume at launch compared to the 4080, which a lot of people don't know this, wasn't a lot as I reported in previous videos. But, you know, the 4080 didn't have a lot of supply and yet it was easily available everywhere because no one wanted it. People think this will be even less wanted and so it's going to be very easy to get a hold of. And in fact, one distributor contact in the European Union told me that right now, the warehouses they ship from, you know, to various retailers, almost no one is requesting this card. So it doesn't really matter how you dice it, you know, and that's just some of the sources that were willing to be quoted here. I've actually heard from more right before I started recording. Across the board, globally, the pre-launch data is that there is zero interest in this card. Uh, when I talk to people like even at like Newegg, Best Buy, Micro Center, Overclockers, like every retailer that I can talk to, there's no interest ahead of time and they're not ordering any. I really do think this could be the worst selling NVIDIA card in a long time, maybe ever. And if that happens and if PC gamers hold strong, I do think finally NVIDIA is going to have to wake up and stop pricing their stuff so ridiculously. Either that or they're just going to have some financial troubles here pretty soon. I guess we'll just have to see. But uh, yeah, I don't just want to talk about the 4060 Ti today. I also want to talk about the RX 7600. Do I think this card, another 8 gigabyte card launching right now when this video is coming out, is really any better than the 4060 Ti? Well, I do have benchmarks from multiple websites and some testing houses ahead of time. And, and some of these testing houses actually had data for the RTX 4060. So I'm going to be able to talk about that now today as well. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Jesse here loves sticks, but it definitely wouldn't be healthy if I just let her chow down on them all the time as much as she would like to. The same is usually true for reasonably priced instant meals for humans. It's easy to feel stuck looking for something that's quick to cook, tasty, healthy, and cheap all at the same time. Well, unless you consider Vite Ramen, this piece of content is sponsored by Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a healthy, tasty, and shelf-stable food crafted by an American startup that offers a ton of options for eating healthy, like their classic packages that make it easy for you to add protein and other ingredients of your choice to make a complete hearty meal or their ramen go packages that offer a healthy microwavable option for those who truly only have a 15 minute lunch break whether at the office or at home click on the link in the description and use the offer code broken silicon to save 10 percent on a variety of different products including special bundles just for moore's laws dead fans raw nudes if you want to make up your own recipes and other food products cooking in utensils and more and when you order this spring know that vite just shut down for three months and relaunch their entire operation to improve speed customer service and just to improve things in the back end so they can keep up with how popular their product has become supporting them helps support me and even just clicking on the link below makes a big difference but i really do like their product and i recommend it so if you're hungry for something that's healthy cheap and easy to make check out vite ramen and use offer code broken silicon today for about a month now Despite warning that AMD wanted to charge over $300 if they could, I have consistently stated that $269 is the bottom AMD is considering for the RX 7600 when it comes to pricing for the 8GB model. And yeah, to date I can confirm that indeed $269 is the MSRP of the 7600. Furthermore, this is right here what the reference cooler looks like, and it will be out there to anchor pricing long term like a lot of other AMD launches. And this is an important thing to point out here. It's not like NVIDIA who does not sell any cards directly from their own website and just allows AIBs to run wild if they can. AMD always seems to or, or usually seems to sell graphics cards from their own website so that if 
pricing gets out of hand on Newegg or Amazon, you can still check AMD.com and try to get something for a reasonable price. They're still going to do that with a reference model with the 7600, and it's going to be priced at $269. But what about performance? Well, look... I think some reviewers are going to get better than average results compared to what I'm going to talk about today. But basically, what I am told from multiple reviewers that I talk to and testing houses, this thing is pretty close to an RX 6700, except it has 8 gigabytes. And in fact, if I put these quotes on screen, I can now exclusively confirm that the RTX 4060 directly trades blows with the 7600 in raster. I was hoping that the... Uh, 7600 would turn out a bit stronger than this, but at least what I am seeing, they are very close in raster performance. And so that means they are both the 4060 and the 7600, depending on the resolution. It, one of them wins a little more on a resolution. I don't want to say which one. Uh, they're, they're both about 9 to 14% faster than a 6600 XT, and therefore 14 to 24% faster than a 3060. And when I talked to some reviewers, one reviewer told me that, honestly, on average... Uh, it's 11% faster than the 3060 12 gigabyte, but that does make it 15% weaker than the 3060 Ti and 20% weaker than the 4060 Ti. So it's basically barely an upgrade over the existing sub $300 8 gigabyte cards that people have been able to buy for months. And this person highlighted that's why this really isn't interesting at all. And then another reviewer told me that they found that the 7600 8 gigabyte uh, offered 77% the performance of the 4060 Ti for 67% of the price. So it's not great. That is an improvement in price performance over the 4060 Ti. But this person did think that there is a real argument here that long term, the fact of the matter is 8 gigabytes, that size of VRAM is going to limit both of these cards anyways. And because of that, the 7600 is a far more balanced graphics card that budget shoppers should gravitate towards. You know, if you can save like over $100 and get if we're being honest, basically the same performance because they both have 8 gigabytes, then you should get the AMD option. Although this person did say that if NVIDIA offered something close to the same price, they would pay a little bit more for NVIDIA because of DLSS. And, you know, I think I do agree pretty much entirely with contact number three. And I actually said this in the last Broken Silicon that, look... At below $300, I think I'm going to recommend the 7600 over the 4060 Ti pretty easily. Yeah, the 4060 Ti is stronger, but it's not enough stronger than the 7600 to warrant how much more it costs. And really, more importantly, at the end of the day, both of these cards, the 7600 and the 4060 Ti, are going to be limited by their 8 gigabyte buffer. So I don't really feel like you're paying for anything extra with the 4060 Ti. You know, at a certain level of performance... That's all you really need to hit high refresh rates in medium settings in 1080p, which is all these graphics cards are really going to be capable of doing. But if NVIDIA had a card even weaker than the 4060 Ti, but at least trading blows with a 7600, the fact that NVIDIA offers DLSS actually matters more here than I think it does at higher tiers. Because in 1080p, at the highest quality DLSS, it looks far less bad comparatively than FSR does. You see, in 4K, FSR 2.0 and DLSS 2.0, they're pretty close. But in 1080p, they're not. DLSS looks better. And you're probably going to have to use FSR and DLSS in a lot of games with these graphics cards to fit and compress the screen into that buffer so it actually fits. And so I actually think DLSS is an important enough factor that when the 4060 comes out at $300 with about the same performance as the 7600, I would pay that extra 10% for it. But this also gets into something interesting here. The 7600 is launching today. The 4060 doesn't launch till July that's a couple of months from now, and it just seems like we are in a tech recession where everything goes down in price over time. So what I'm suggesting is right now, I would definitely get the 7600 over the 4060 Ti. Not that I think it's fantastic or anything, but I would. Two months from now, would I over a $300 4060? Maybe not, but in two months from now, I'm going to guess the 7600 might be 260 or 250. And at that point, once it's 250 versus 300, I'd still probably just go with the 7600 because you're going to be using lower settings with these cards anyway. They have way more than enough raster performance for their 8 gigabyte buffer. So as long as AMD can keep the 7600 
like 15%, 20% cheaper than the 4060. By the time the 4060 actually comes out, just get the cheapest 8 gigabyte card, just like what I would conclude now versus the 4060 Ti. Although I do have to close this video by saying my true recommendation, if you are a budget shopper, and I do feel like I'm one of the only YouTube channels that's been harping about this for half a year now, get an RX 6700 10 gigabyte. I think there is a very real reason AMD has priced the 7600 at $269. The first reason is they know if it looks vastly cheaper than NVIDIA's stronger 8GB card, a lot of people are probably going to choose their far cheaper 8GB card. But it's also because they know this should be $10 less than the 10GB 6700. And if you were to go online and say, do I want an 8GB 7600 or a 10GB 6700, uh, they both use about the same amount of energy anyways, by the way. I would 100% recommend the 6700. It's the same performance or actually maybe even slightly better performance in a lot of scenarios. And it has that extra bit of VRAM where I just don't think it's going to be a real issue here. Look, you're not buying the 6700 to max out 4K. But if you get it right now, I found in my testing that that thing in 4K with games released over the past few years, I mean, it has the same amount of VRAM as a 3080. You're going to do 4K 60? Fine. You'd go down to like... FSR in 4K, maybe high settings. There's even plenty of games you can probably do 4K high refresh rate gaming if it isn't one of the latest releases. And then in 1440p, it's solid in high settings with 10 gigabytes. And in 1080p, you've really got probably a high to ultra card for the foreseeable future. Get the 6700 10 gigabyte. They will not be in stock forever. And I do think AMD is choosing to price the 7600 right exactly where it makes sense to fill the niche that the 6600 through 6700 are filling right now. But that stock won't always be there. So for that matter, I would also recommend a $200 6600 over the like 20% better or something to $70, uh, 7,600. Because at the end of the day, I have to follow my own advice. Get the cheapest 8 gigabyte card that is even recently released. 8 gigabytes is going to be the limiting factor. But if you have the money, push it to 6,700. And uh, yeah, that is going to do it for this video. I got enough information, you know, pictures of the 7600 performance, 4060 performance, which is about the same as the 7600 in raster, and supply information that I thought it would be good to push this out right before reviews go live so I can be part of that initial conversation. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. Please double check that you're subscribed to the Morris Law is Dead YouTube vit, uh, channel. And also, please consider supporting us on patreon for just two dollars a month you get hour long or more die shrink videos and extra analysis and extra interviews that are only on the patreon there's tons of stuff there that only the patrons get access to including a discord and if you have four dollars uh, to spare every month, you also get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon, free order mail for Broken Silicon, and loose ends. And there's just so much content out there if you have that extra money every month. We cannot do this without our patrons. But for everybody else, thank you for watching.